Hi friends, this is a quick video walkthrough of 10 subitizing sets and one challenge pattern. You can download the PowerPoint file from my blog by clicking on the link below. When you do, you're going to see quite a few slides, but this is actually a really simple resource to use, and we'll take a quick look at it here. The way the resource works is that there are 10 subitizing sets, which are found here. I'll take just a moment to color those. And then after the 10 subitizing sets, there's one challenge pattern, which is found at the end here, and I'll take just a moment to show you where that is. So the way this resource works is that the students move through 10 quick subitizing sets, and then they spend quite a bit of time at the end on the challenge pattern. So let's take a quick look at the subitizing sets. I'll start with set number one. Set number one of 10, when you click, the screen will turn blank. And then on the next click, a set of dots will appear like this. I would show them for about one second, then click again, and the question appears, how many dots were there? When you click again, the dots will reappear, and then as you click again, it will move to set number two of 10. This is about how long I would show the dots for. I would click to clear the screen, and then I would show the dots for about one second, like this. The dots will disappear, and then you probably already have a number in your mind. You probably saw the set of dots, and you thought how many there were. You were probably subitizing by instantly detecting the number in this small group. When you click again, the dots will reappear, and then on the next click, it's going to move to set 3 of 10. So you can see how this is going to move pretty quickly through these first 10 sets. Let me go through two more just to show you the timing that I personally use on these. Here's a click to clear the screen. I would show the dots for about this long, about one second. Then I would ask the students how many there were. Probably a lot of students would tell me that they saw four. They might even describe how they saw the dots, how they knew that there were four. And then after a little bit of conversation, then I would click to show the dots again. Here they are. And then I would move to the next set. So here's set number four of 10. Again, I'll click to clear the screen. And again, this is about how long I would show the dots for. And I would ask the question, how many dots are there? When you come to set 10 of 10, it's going to end just a little bit differently. So here's set 10 of 10. How many dots were there? There's conversation. The dots will reappear. But then this text box will pop up, letting the students know that it's time for the challenge set. Now, even though we've been moving through the subitizing slides at a pretty quick pace, the challenge set is where things slow down and the conversation becomes even deeper and even richer. So what does this look like? As you click forward, there's a challenge example and the text says you are about to see a larger group of dots. Instead of saying how many dots there are, find as many ways as you can to show how you know what the total is. Here is an example. And when you click, this example will appear. Now as you continue to click, some annotation will appear on the screen and equations will also appear. And this serves as an example to show the students that there are many, many different ways of seeing the same pattern. After that, it will say, now I'll show you a large copy of your pattern. Then I'll show you several smaller copies so you can find as many ways as possible of showing different ways of seeing the total. Here it is. And when you click again, the challenge pattern will appear. At first, it's going to be a large pattern. It fills the screen. And there's a question in the top corner, what do you see? And very importantly, how else can you see it? Now, for the purpose of annotation, especially in a distance learning scenario, you can click again, and when you do, the pattern will be duplicated on the screen. So if you can annotate using a digital pen or something like that, there are multiple opportunities for you to do that here. And then when you click again, you'll see that that comes to the end of the file. So if you click on the link below, that will take you to the blog post. If you scroll down to the bottom of the blog post, you can find this file. And again, the file that you're looking for is 10 subitizing sets and one challenge pattern. On slide number two, there are further directions about how to use these. Again, you can find the link in the description below to download this free resource for your classroom. Thank you for watching.